All right, now we're going to begin the third and final second section of a differential calculus. I like to break it up into three stages. There's the limits, derivatives, applications, and now we're going to look at curve sketching, maximum and minimum functions, and optimization. So this is going to be a very quick video. So we're going to look at maximums and minimum values. So if we have a graph and we have some function, uh, wavy functions are really good for this kind of stuff. And what we do is we say, okay, it starts here and it ends at this point. And we, we're going to talk about absolute minimums, absolute minimums, local maximums, and local minimums. So you should know that on this graph right here, this point here is a maximum. And every single time that it changes directions, we have another maximum and we have another minimum. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of maximums and minimums. And the highest maximum is the absolute maximum and the lowest minimum is the absolute minimum. And the rest are just local. So we can write local for all of these. We don't have to, but that's the difference. So if you have a formal definition, we say, let C be in the domain A and B. So it's in this interval A and B. And then we say that F of C is an absolute max if f of c is greater than f of x for all x, which means that if we have a function and it looks like this, and this is our domain here, a and b, we take f of c, so this number c, because it's greater than all of these other values here. So this would be f of c right here. This just happens in this example to be at the point a. But if we were to take a look right here and we were to say exactly with this graph, well, this point here, this f of c here is greater than every single other point, so it's the absolute maximum. And similarly, f of c is an absolute minimum if f of c is greater than or less than, uh, I mean, sorry, less than or equal to f of x for all x. So again, in this thing here, we'll call this f of c prime. It's a different c, but it's smaller than everything else. So these are the definitions of absolute max and absolute minimums. Now, when we have a local max or a local minimum, it's almost the same definition, but we have a local max if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for x near c. So this is saying, okay, let's let's isolate this area a little bit. So let's call it like this area right here, or in this case a max. So it's it's near c. So everything in here is near c. It's a small enough distance, and this point here is greater than all of the other points in that little interval. So that's a local max. And the minimum, by this point, you should be able to guess if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for x near c. So again, it's very similar arguments, but really a graph is probably the best way to show this thing. And this is pretty much all we're going to cover in this video. But I guess what I'll do is I'll show an example just to see what's going on. In fact, I think I have a couple here. We're just going to do this graphically for now. So we have f of x is equal to x squared. So what do we know here? What does this graph look like? It looks like that. It goes up and up and up. So you can probably tell me what the absolute minimum is. In fact, just tell me a minimum. Well, that's the minimum right there, f of 0. So that's the minimum. Is it an absolute minimum? Yeah, because it just keeps going up and up everywhere else. So it's the most, it's the smallest number you're ever going to get on this graph. But the question is now, does it have an absolute maximum? In fact, not only that, does it even have a local max? Because 
well, what if there's more than one max? And I, I, what you're thinking probably is that this goes up to infinity. So, yeah, it has a maximum at infinity, but that's not true. There is no max, whether it's absolute or local, because it doesn't stop. This is the whole graph. We're talking about negative infinity to infinity. So there's no highest point. It just keeps getting higher. If, if we pick a max, let's say, okay, at x is equal to infinity minus 1, then that's the, the max. Well, no, because you can still add 1 to that, and you get higher. So there is no maximum value. Uh, let's take a look at a, another function here. Let's take a look at f of x is equal to 1 over x. You might remember this function looks something like this. Ooh, that should not be curving like that. It should be curving like that. So if we say absolute minimum, absolute maximums, there aren't any for this graph. But what if we were to say, well, what if we made it so x has to be greater or equal to 1? So now we only look from here on. So we have a graph that looks like this. And all this stuff over here just no longer matters. Well, we don't have an absolute minimum because it keeps going and it never touches anything. That's the problem. It never gets to zero. It gets really, really close to zero, but it never gets to zero. So we can't say that it has a minimum because whatever value we pick, it can go a little bit further and get a little bit lower. And it's not ever going to be zero because it doesn't touch zero. So there's no absolute minimum. However, there is a maximum here at f of 1 is equal to 1 because this is the boundary. So it's almost like saying, okay, I, I have a graph that starts here and it just goes down forever and never quite reaches 1 or 0. So yeah, this is an absolute maximum here because we've restricted, we've restricted the graph. So it's not the whole function, it's just a portion of the function. And we just so happen to have a point here that happens to be higher than the rest of the points. Because f of 1 is greater than or equal to f of x for x in the bound or the the boundaries of 1 and infinity. So if you want a, the formal definition in place there, we say that f of 1 is greater or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of 1 to infinity. So if that's the sufficient way of putting it for you, then that would be it. But anyways, that was maximums and minimums. Next time we're going to really go crazy into this and talk about critical points and from Ma's theorem. and It's going to get crazy, but you need to know this basic stuff, the graphical stuff, before we get into the definitions and theorems.